us have um, some very dedicated attorneys keeping that abortion clinic open. Wow. Now, well, for well, Kennedy wouldn't be doing it. Now, your your husband, I'm, your husband, is he involved with you on this? Uh, uh, how, wh- wh- how are you a husband and wife team, or what kind of support are you getting oh, from my, family? No, my my husband is very supportive. He actually works. Outside of the ministry, and um, yeah, so he's very, very supportive, but he's not really involved like we are. He goes to our events and things like that, but he makes yeah, sure that he, 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 he makes sure that you out. stay safe. He makes sure that you stay safe, right? Yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> so, and um, he puts up with my bad hours. <laughs> I hear you. Things like that. So, yeah. Well, but, I remember. Um, I, well, I remember my. Uh, Good. We got a little lag in the delay. Oh, he, oh, I'm sorry. He just he understands really well how important our work is, and um, so he's been really good about it. In fact, it was really his idea to move out here um, to help, get, help Troy out, and so I really appreciate the support, the family support. My daughter basically, my daughter works for Operation Rescue. My son-in-law works for Operation Rescue now. Um, my other daughter has worked for us in the past as well, so it's kind of a family thing. I hear <laughs> it's a family. Well, well, what I was going to say is, and, and we had a lag. I apologize for that. You know, we're do, you know, this is a streamcast, a live streamcast heard worldwide, and for people mm-hmm. archiving or listening to it on the interface, or for all you streamers, it will be downloadable within the hour after the show. We're probably going to run about ten, ten thirty. Even at, uh, we're going to keep going even after our guest leaves. But I remember when I was protesting one time with my ex-wife. In the 80s, um, and she was just playing her guitar, acoustic guitar on the side, not amplified sound, just playing some praise and worship music. And uh, <laughs> then um, the neighbor uh, to the house right beside the abortion clinic, well, uh, he he was going to smash that guitar and, and on her. And, and, and Dave, I did say, I didn't get rude, Dave. Like I wasn't as radical back then as I, but I did say, you know, you know, I did. You know, I, I mean, it is your your biblical duty, Dave, to protect your family, especially your spouse. Okay, oh, Dave. Yeah. And and I remember the abortion doctor uh, of the Aware Woman Clinic, Dave. One time he had his nice little sports car, and he 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 ran up. Uh, he ran up uh, on the sidewalk and tried to run me over, Dave. So the protest you heard about me being almost run over last month in South Carolina wasn't the first time that's happened to me, Dave. Okay. <laughs> You know, or they, people would drive by and throw rocks at us or ice cubes, you know, uh, at us. And it's so, but you got to take it with a grain of salt on that, Dave. When you do, uh, when you're in a situation like that, um, because we we didn't respond back in that situation. We had to do. It was different than when we we're protesting in AU Dave, because in that situation, you you want to be a witness. You want to be a testimony to these to these women, so that they, you know, so that they can see your love uh, on that and. Uh, and it did work. And uh, like you said, um, Cheryl, you did inform me uh, prior to the show that that place they used to protest at every weekend for years is now shut down. Yes, it shut down a few years ago. Yeah, I think you said about three or four years ago. I mean, I uh, uh, last time I protested that was in 1990. So uh, I did it from about 86 to 90, almost every weekend, Dave. <laughs> Well, a weekend off here and there, Dave. But so, with that, um, we I want everybody to visit OperationRescue.org dot uh, org if you if you if you value life, people, and if you value freedom, freedom for the unborn. Uh, now, Cheryl, why has? Well, that's a stupid question, Dave. I was going to say, why haven't we heard more about this case? Uh, uh, you uh, in, in circles. Why are the churches? Uh, 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 not talking about it, and maybe Dave, you can help uh, as this because uh, on, you, you took an answer to this. Why are the churches so silent? And I'm not saying they all are, Cheryl, but many are. Is it not? A lot of them are. Too many of them are. <laughs> they're, they're afraid to speak out. It seems like, and I'm not putting down Christianity. What I'm trying to say is, it's like I'm, all I hear is Jesus loves you. Uh, pass the plate and buy this, buy this, buy that, and and. And sing kumbaya and, and you know and all this, but but is it not the biblical responsibility of of uh, the clergy and the pastors to expose the works of darkness and bring it to light? 
and to stand up for the unborn? Are we not biblically commanded, Dave and Cheryl, to, to stand for the unborn uh, and, and not just tickle the ears? Dave, it says in the last days, Dave, that they'll tickle, tickle their ears and they will make the, the people that they're ministering to, Dave, they will make them twice as much a son of hell as they themselves. Dave? Well, you have to remember, Jim, number one, a child is a gift to God. It is not something that we just create. It is a gift. Not everybody can conceive, but those who do, uh, the Bible says it's a gift to God. So it, it, uh, life comes from God, and so does death. So he's going to be, he has you from the beginning to the end. People who do not want to recognize that um, have a major problem. Uh, so when you take a life, you are taking one of the most precious things that God can give you, a gift, and you're saying, I do not want it. And if, if you have a, if you as a parent had a child who, who when you went to give them a gift, they said, I don't want it, how would that make you feel? Right. And, and it says, before, think- before I knew you, uh, before, uh, before you were in the womb, I knew you, Dave, too. He right. says. Go ahead, Cheryl. I think another reason that um, pastors are timid about speaking about abortion from the pulpit is because about 42% of all women um, at, at the, after the, at the age of 40, by the time they're 40 years old, about 42% of all women will have had at least one abortion. And um, a great percentage of that will be women who identify themselves as Christians. So it's a very touchy subject. And um, when a pastor broaches the abortion subject from the pulpit, there's going to be a lot of really uncomfortable people sitting in the pews. And I think they're afraid of what's going to happen to their church if they if they actually start doing something about abortion, and um, a lot of it, a lot of it is fear, and that's what keeps these people from doing what God commands. You know, we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. What you know, we don't want someone to come and rip our arms and legs off and smash our heads. You know what I mean? Why do we allow it for our preborn neighbor? You know, let's we're you know we're commanded to um, rescue the innocent. Hold back those that are being drawn to the slaughter. That's a biblical mandate. But you know, the the pastors in the pulpits are mm-hmm. are more business people. They're more CEOs now mm-hmm. than actual leaders of their flocks, and they they just are afraid. They're afraid of a loss of income. They're afraid of a church split over it. You know. So but is that not ungodly? A, is that not ungodly, Cheryl? To you, you're talking about absolutely. fear. Absolutely. Because fear is not of God, it is of the devil, right? I'm not excusing it. Yeah, absolutely, and I'm not excusing it at all. I'm just saying that's that's what we've seen from the pulpits. And, you know, we we long for the men of God to stand in the pulpit and um, lead their people on the street. Because the churches are saying, well, any community, let's say half of the people in half of the churches went out to their abortion clinics, you know, and were there every hour that the clinic was open, that clinic wouldn't be able to open. We closed an abortion clinic in San, in San Diego that way back in the early 80s. Um, we, we picketed them to death, so we, and we kept a moving picket line in front of that one door, and those women would not go in there. They didn't like that. It made them uncomfortable, and it gave our fellow counselors time to talk to them. We had tons of babies saved. They couldn't stay in business, you know, yeah. so... Um, we've heard we've heard it said that um, every community, every church should have a big sign. Um, we should put a sign over the abortion clinic that says this abortion clinic is open by the consent of the church, because um, by si- by their silence, they're consenting to it and they're allowing it to happen. And yeah, I agree with you one hundred percent. Exactly, because Dave, like she said, life is a gift of God, and it should be cherished, it should be nourished, and it should be protected. You know, um, Dave, in pro and job, and job, Job, which by the way, Dave, I don't know if you know this, the Book of Job is the oldest book written in the Bible. Did you know that, Dave? Dave, no. oh, I didn't. 
Well, I know you're going to say it was Genesis, right? No, I guess I, I, I'm losing Dave. I'm losing you, Dave. Okay, Dave, are you there? Okay, we're losing yeah, Dave. I'm here. Okay, I'm here. Okay, well, you're okay. It's fourth for the fourth time. Uh, Genesis, you would probably think is the oldest book in the Bible because it talks about Adam and Eve and the formation of the of the stars and all that. But it's actually it's physically written. Job is the oldest book written, physically written. Um, it says, Dave, in Job 31.15, um, says, Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast from birth. I was cast upon you from my mother's womb. You have been my God. Did not he who made me in the womb make them? Do, did not the same one form us both within our mothers? That's jo- Job Thirty-one fifteen, Dave. Well, that's exactly right, Jim. Um, <clears throat> if you if you go back into uh, John the Baptist, when uh, Mary went before uh, John's mother, uh, right. the baby leaped in the womb upon the mention of of her being pregnant. Right. And uh, here here you have a a situation where where everybody's rejoicing because the, the Christ is going to be born. Well, yeah, exactly. And here's another verse I'd like to use to share before you leave. Dave? Defend the cause of the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the rights of the poor and oppressed. Rescue the weak and needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. That's Psalm 82, 3 and 4. And it says, rescue those. This is in Proverbs now, 24. Rescue those being led away to death. Hold back those staggering towards slaughter. If you say, but we knew nothing about this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who guards your life know it? Will not he repay each person according to what he has done? But we do want to point out that God does forgive people, uh, that has been involved in this, Dave. It got, they can be cleansed, but um, you know. But we are to defend the fatherless. What more than the fatherless, Dave, than a child? And it is a child, because they, we, we've often hear court cases where someone kills a, a, the, uh, like the recent case, Dave, the the, um, the Marine woman, right, Dave? Right. That well, she, the guy that killed her is being charged with her death and the death of the unborn the child, baby. Dave. Right, but yet if she decided right. to have an abortion, oh, that's okay, Dave. Right, go ahead, Cheryl. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. It's schizophrenic. But I think what we're seeing is a, a big change um, in our country right now. It, it, the public opinion is starting to sway the other direction. People are starting to value more life, value life more than they ever have it, especially young people. Well, I've seen polls where um, the younger generations are more pro-life than ever before, and so that gives me some hope that eventually we'll see an end to this culture of death because um, it's just going to be something that people don't embrace, you know. And, And abortion is a business. You know, there's supply and demand. If there's not demand for it, the abortion points are going to close up. They're going to stay in business because they make money. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I'm encouraged, actually, that there, ha- there are changes right now. People are becoming more pro-life, and there's still a long ways to go, but I see some progress, and I think that we're going to see an end to abortion um, sometime soon, hopefully in my lifetime, and we're going to well, keep fighting. I'm going to have to run now. I, oh, really I was about to tell you, guys. You, you, went, you had so much fun, see? You went double the time, but hey, Cheryl, we would love to have you back, <laughs> and uh, we would love to have your. Um, uh, oh gosh, I'm embarrassed. We, we we'd love to have actually both of you guys back at some point in the future, if if that might well, that'd be, be great. If that might be possible, uh, you know, get uh, Troy. Uh, you know, we'd love to have Troy uh, come on sometime, and um, you know, we address a variety of issues, but this is one, I think is very important. And Cheryl, right after you leave, what we're going to be playing, just to let you know, is we're going to play uh, the video, um, the audio to the video that's on your site. Uh, we're 
we can hear where we'll really hear Tiller uh, admitting uh, to late abortions. Uh, we'll hear him describe babies as handicaps and burdens of women in society, and admit that he never knew as the Federal Born Alive Infant Protection Act. And this guy calls himself right, a doctor. Great. What a joke. Well, God bless you, Cheryl. And, uh, again, you want to give a um, – do you have any special needs or requests or how can people help out with Operation Rescue? What can they do, the listeners do, uh, besides pray 